Hi, and welcome to this new video in the series on Bluetooth Low Energy Technology. My name is Mohamed Afani, and in today's video we'll be covering one of the most important features introduced in Bluetooth 5, the LE Coded 5, or what's called Long Range Mode. Some of the topics we'll address in this video include the definition of Coded 5, how it works, when should you use it, and finally, we'll go over some real-world test results conducted by some of the most popular Bluetooth chipset vendors. Before we learn about what coded phi is, we need to define what phi is. Phi refers to the physical layer in a network model. And in Bluetooth, it's the interface between the actual radio hardware and the link layer. In other words, it acts as a translation layer between the analog world and the digital world. As of the latest version of Bluetooth, 5.1, Bluetooth Low Energy has three phi's. The first is the standard 1 megabit phi, which was introduced since the beginning of BLE in 2010 in version 4.0. The second is the 2 megabit phi, which was introduced in Bluetooth 5.0 and can be used to achieve a higher speed than the standard 1 megabit phi. In other words, it doubles the speed. The third and final phi, which is our topic for this video, is the coded phi, which was also introduced in Bluetooth version 5.0 and is used to achieve a longer range, up to four times the standard BLE range. Now we've talked about the phi part in coded phi, let's talk about what coded means. A coding is in simple terms, is applying data redundancy to allow data recovery at the receiver without the need for retransmissions of the data. So in the scenario where data gets corrupted during the transmission, the receiver can utilize the data redundancy to recover the original data without having to request a retransmission. However, data recovery does not work in all cases, especially if the received data is highly corrupted. Now one important thing to note is that it does not rely on increased transmit power from the transmitter, but rather data is sent at the standard one mega symbol per second rate where multiple symbols represent each bit of data. This means that the effective data rate will be reduced compared to the standard one megabit per second rate. The effective data rate also depends on the coding scheme used. Let's go over a few important notes on coded phi. First, coded phi is optional in Bluetooth 5.0. This means that not all Bluetooth 5.0 chipsets will support it. So make sure you check the technical specs before choosing a Bluetooth chipset for your long range project. Second, there are two coding schemes available for use. S equals two, which means two symbols per data bit, which cuts the data rate down to half the standard data rate or 500 kilobits per second. The other one is the S equals eight, where it uses eight symbols per data bit, which reduces the data rate from the standard one megabit rate down to 125 kilobits per second rate. In addition to that, Using coded phi will result in an increase in power consumption because of the radio on time. For example, if you want to transmit 8 bits and you're using the S equals 8 scheme, then you will have to actually transfer 64 bits for that 8 bit of data, which means that it will increase the radio on time and increase power consumption with it. Coded phi is also available for use in both advertising and connection states. This allows discovery over longer ranges compared to the standard 1 megabit phi. Now keep in mind that in the advertising state, the device using the coded phi does not send out the advertising data on the primary advertising channels 37, 38, and 39, but rather it utilizes extended advertisements on the secondary channels for sending the advertisement data. In this case, the primary advertisements contain the information needed to locate the channels and times at which the secondary advertisements are sent. Not only is Coded Phi helpful for long-range applications, it is also helpful for achieving more reliable connectivity and increased ability to travel through walls and obstacles. Now that we've covered some of the theory behind Coded Phi, let's talk about how it works. So the data goes through two processes before being transmitted over the air from the transmitter to the receiver. The first process is it gets encoded by a forward error correction or FEC encoder. And second, the output of that first process gets spread by a pattern mapper. We won't get into the details of these operations, but they are detailed in the official Bluetooth specification if you are interested in learning more. 
The result of that second process is then transmitted over the air to the receiver. Let's take a look at the format of a coded Phi packet. This diagram is taken from the official Bluetooth specification document. It defines the packet format for both the advertising and data packets. Notice that not all parts of the packet use the same coding. In fact, some parts are not even coded, for example, the preamble, and some are fixed to use the S equals 8 coding scheme. The diagram also shows how long it takes to transmit each of these fields based on the coding scheme used, which is based on the standard 1 mega symbol per second rate. So when should you consider using the coded PHY? So while some of the best use cases for coded PHY include long-range applications such as a mobile device controlling a drone, for example. It could also help in achieving more reliable communication in congested areas and through obstacles and walls, since it's better equipped to handle data errors and corruption. And finally, it makes more sense to, for applications that require low data rate transfers. Otherwise, it will have a significant impact on power consumption as well as usability. Now let's talk about some real-world test results for using the coded file. The Nordic Semiconductor published both a video and later a blog post showcasing a couple of tests of utilizing coded PHY for long-range communication. In the final test, they were able to achieve a reliable connection at a range of 1300 meters, transmitting at 0 dBm. On the other hand, Texas Instruments also published a video and an article showcasing their test of coded PHY, which they achieved a range of 1500 meters, transmitting at plus 5 dBm. As you can see from these real-world test results, Bluetooth is no longer a short-range communication protocol, but rather it can achieve longer-range communication between two devices, especially if it's out in the open. To learn more about Elasis, provider of the world's most advanced Bluetooth analyzers, visit elasis.com. Have a need for training or design services? Then contact our training partner, Novelbits, at novelbits.io. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and learned a little bit more about BLE. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.